please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. How are you, Guru Maharaj? Are you better? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Still have a material body. <laughs> How are you? Uh, we are fine, Guru Maharaj. Charu Mataji, I am Guru Maharaj. Huh? Charu Mataji from Nepal. They are here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very happy. I heard somebody's going to go to Burma. Who is that? Uh, from from Thailand. Yeah, is that Rupesh? Rupesh is going to go to Burma. Oh, I don't know, Guru Maharaj. I didn't hear anything about it. Recording in progress. Recording stopped. I need to share the screen. Yes, Daniel. Recording in progress. Om Magyana Tamarandasya Gyanantana Shalakaya Chaksurun Tanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadegor Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So we're reading the Krishna book and we're on chapter number 64, which is the story of King Nriga. <laughs> So we heard how the family of Lord Krishna, oh, the many sons of Krishna, they'd gone into the forest and at one point they were very thirsty and they found a well. But in the bottom of the well there's a big lizard. So they saw this big lizard in the well and they understood the animal was trapped in this well. They tried to get it out, but they couldn't they couldn't get it out. So they came back, uh, they, they went home to Dwarka and they told Lord Krishna and when Lord Krishna heard about it, he immediately came there. And Krishna just used his left hand, put his left hand into the well and as soon as he touched the lizard, the lizard transformed into a beautiful demigod. And so the, the demigod was effulgent like gold and he wore many expensive ornaments around his neck and beautiful clothing. So Lord Krishna is omniscient, he knows everything and he knew why the, the, this demigod had been in the body of a lizard. But still he, he wanted 
to hear from the lizard. He wanted to hear from the demigod himself. So he asked the demigod about how he got that body of a lizard. And Krishna said, now you have the, the demigod body and I can see you're very handsome and beautiful, but you were in that body of a lizard just a few minutes ago. So uh, I want, want you to explain how you got that body of a lizard. And Krishna says, I think it, that it must be that uh, something which you did with your karma in your past that caused you to get that body of a lizard. But Krishna says, I want to hear from you. I want you to tell us how you were put into that situation. So please tell us who you are and tell us about how you got that body of a lizard. So this big lizard was this was actually the, the demigod, the, this was King Nriga. And when he got asked by Krishna to explain who he was, then he first of all bowed down before Krishna and he touched his helmet to the ground before his, the lotus feet of Krishna. So after offering his obeisances to Krishna, then he explained to Lord Krishna he, and to all the people there, he said, I am King Nriga and I'm the son of King Ikshvaku. And he went on to say that if you know about all the charitably, all the very charitable men in the world, then you must have heard my name. You are the witness to everything and you are aware of everything done by everyone, past, present and future. So we can't hide anything from you because you know everything. So anyway, you're, the, King Nega said, you, will, you want me to explain my history, what happened to me, so I will tell you the whole story. So King Nega explained about how he was accustomed to perform many karma kanda activities, activities which he did to enjoy material benefits. So he was, he was fond to give charity and he had given away so many cows that the, the total number of cows which he gave, uh, that it was equal to the number of particles of dust on the earth. 
ให้ทำบุญในการให้ทานวัวเนี่ยเป็นอย่างมากซึ่งจำนวนที่เขาทำบุญเนี่ยสามารถเปรียบเทียบได้กับฝุ่นลองที่ลอยอยู่ในอากาศ Or he gave, he gave away as many cows as there are stars in the sky, and as many cows as there are drops of water in the rainfall. The hai tham bun thau kap thau kap mean kap me puak dog duong dao bun sawan, lao ka mean ka yut nam ti kert kun the nai ti dai tok long ma. So in the Vedic culture. It's a custom. If someone wants to give charity, the best charity they can give is to give cows to the brahmanas. So, King Nriga was saying that he followed this principle very care, very seriously. But he made a very small mistake, and because he made a mistake, he had to take birth as a lizard. So in the Bhagavad Gita. It is recommended by Krishna that if somebody wants to give charity and desires to get the benefit of the charity, then he should give his he should offer his gifts to please Krishna. <laughs> ผู้ใดที่มีใจบุญและปรารถนาที่จะได้รับผลประโยชน์จากการให้ทานเนี่ยเขาควรเขาควรถวายของขวัญทั้งหมดเพื่อให้กฤษณาทรงยินดี Instead of giving to some ordinary brahmana in the material world, if you give to Krishna, it will be much better. มากกว่าการที่ให้ให้พรามในโลกหรือให้ใครก็แล้วแต่ถ้าให้กฤษณาเนี่ยจะเป็นผลดีกว่า So to give charity means to perform pious activities, and the benefit of pious activities is it will help us to go to the higher planets. So people like to go to the higher planets. They want to go to heaven because there's a lot of material enjoyment there. But the, we have to understand that even if we go to the heavenly planets, we cannot stay there forever, and we can fall down from there. And we see the example of King Nriga, how he was in the heavenly planets, but he became a lizard. So even somebody may be very pious, and they may give a lot of charity, but they, if you make a mistake, it can give you a lot of trouble. And even if you give charity, you may give, you you may do things, and you may do things which are pious, or you may do something which is impious. Either way, you're going to be caught. You'll get stuck in the material world. You're not going to get free of the wheel of birth and death. But if we do the work as a sacrifice for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord, 
That will free us from birth and death. So the King Riga describes that the cows that he gave in charity were not ordinary cows. Each cow was very young and they had given birth to only one calf. And each cow's udder was full of milk and they were very peaceful and healthy. And all these cows were purchased with money which was earned legally. Sometimes people, they, they have the money, they get the money illegally and they want to do pious activities with it. So, so that's not as good as the person who earns the money legally and uses the money for charity. So then the cows, the horns on the cows were all gold plated. And the hooves, the hooves on the cows, they were silver plated. And the cows were also decorated with necklaces and with silk cloths embroidered with pearls. So you could see the cows, they're, they're very valuable cows, you know, they're dressed and they were decorated so nicely, well taken care of, they're very valuable cows. Uh, so the king, the king Nega, he gave the cows, he didn't just give the cows to any ordinary person, but he selected very special people to give the cows. And King Riga would give the cows to people who were first class brahmanas, who had, uh, who had also, he, he had, King Riga had also decorated them with nice garments and gold ornaments. And the brahmanas were were very well qualified. None of them were rich. And the family members of the brahmanas were also poor and they, they were in difficulty to get just the basic necessities of life, just like food and clothing. So, uh, somebody who is actually a real Brahmin, he never keeps money just to have a luxury life. 
ันนี้เป็นครามที่แท้จริงเนี่ยจะไม่เก็บเพื่อที่จะมีชีวิตที่รู้ละ Sometimes people who are like Kshatriyas or the Vaishyas, they may be very wealthy and they may live a comfortable life. Can can you mute, mute these people? There's some sound there in the background, Archana. Okay, okay. Yes, Grimash, done. I didn't realize. Okay, now okay. So a, a real brahmana always keeps himself uh, poor. He doesn't keep a lot of money. And brahmana, he has t h i n g t h a t you y o n g t o n t o n t h a t may they keep n o n a l a y y a m a k m a Because he knows that if he has a lot of money. He will think about materialistic life. So people who are brahmanas, they will live like that. They're very careful never to accumulate a lot of wealth. So all the, all the, the brahmanas who received the cows, they were all like that. They were all they were all poor people. They didn't have much wealth. So the king n a g a would give them all these cows, valuable cows. <laughs> And these brahmanas were also very learned in the Vedic knowledge. And they followed all the austerities and penances in their lives, and they were they were and they were very liberal, uh, generous, and. And they lived. They lived their life according to the standard of brahmanas. And they were friendly to everyone, and they were young, and they were quite fit to act as qualified brahmanas. So besides the cows, they also they were also given land. This king n i g a would not just give them cows; he give them land and gold and houses and horses and elephants. And so any brahmanas who were not married, they were given they were given a wife, so a young woman to marry, a suitable woman who could be their wife. And they were given maid servants and grains and silver and and utensils and clothes and jewels and household furniture, chariots, everything. Ah, there were people who were poor, who had no money, 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 According to the Vedic rituals, it was done as a sacrifice. According to the Vedic rituals. And the king also described that he had given gifts to the brahmanas, but he had performed other pious activities also. 
He didn't just only give gifts to the brahmanas, he did other pious activities as well. Just like he would dig wells so that there would be water, drinking water available everywhere. And he arranged for planting trees on the side of the road and made ponds along the highways. So though the king did all of this, he 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 made one mistake that he had given in charity, he'd given he 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 given the brahmanas cows and he gave in charity. He said one cow entered among other cows. So he, he had given the cow already in charity, but somehow the cow came back to the other cows, and the king gave the same cow in charity again. So the the second time when he gave the charity, he gave the charity to a different Brahmana. So when the Brahmana was taking the cows away, that time the the first Brahmana came and he claimed he came and he said that this was his cow. He said, this is not your cow, this is my cow. You get, the king gave this cow to me. Um, Mataji, please do unmute yourself. I mistakenly did mute to you. Chinese Mataji, translated, okay. So the cow was given away twice. It was given to one Brahmana and then somehow the same cow got given to another Brahmana. So the two Brahmanas were surprised and they said, hey, this is my cow. The king gave this cow to me. And they were arguing about whose cow, who belonged, who was the owner of the cow. So they came to, back to King Nriga and they asked him, that, you know, you give this cow to me, how could you give this cow to him? So if you give the, if you give something to someone and then take it back and give it to somebody else, that's sinful. And, and it's more sinful when you do that with a brahmana. So both the brahmanas were uh, were upset with the king, and they complained again to the king. And the king Niga, he was surprised. He didn't know how this had happened. But the king was very humble and he came before the, the two Brahmins and he told the Brahmins that I will give each of you 100,000 cows in exchange for that one cow. So they were fighting over one cow. 
And then the king said, oh, I'll, don't, look, I'll give you a hundred thousand cows to each to make up for this one cow. So King Nige was very humble when he begged the, the brahmanas, he said, I'm very sorry, I made this mistake. He said, I just want to be your servant. Please allow me to serve you. And he prayed to the two brahmanas, please accept my offer and take these new other, all these other cows. The, the king knew that if he didn't satisfy the brahmanas, then it could cause him going to hell. So anything that belongs to a brahmana, it cannot be taken away even by the government. But both the brahmanas insisted that that cow was theirs and they wouldn't agree to take another, any other cows. They said, we don't want your 100,000 cows. Each Brahmana said, I want that cow. That was the cow that was given to me. And they wouldn't take the, any other cow. So they didn't accept the king's offer and the two Brahmanas were upset and they left the palace in an angry mood. And they thought, they were both thinking that my property has been taken by this King Niga. So after this incident, a short time later, King Niga died. He gave up his body and he got taken to Yamaraj, the god, the god of death. So Yamaraj asked King Niga, he said, do you want to enjoy your pious activities first? Or do you want to suffer for all you, your impious activities first? And Yamaraj told the king, he said, I can see you did many, many, many pious activities. You gave a lot of charity, but you also did something sinful. So the king had done so much charity, done so much pious activities that he would enjoy unlimited happiness, he would enjoy great, great happiness in the material world. Uh, but the king decided, they said, no, it's better let me first suffer the results of my impious activities. And then after that, then I will take the results of my pious activities. So when the king said that, then Yamaraj immediately changed the king into the body of a lizard. 
หลังจากที่กษัตริย์ต้องการเช่นนั้นบอกถึงความประสงค์ของตนเองแล้วเนี่ยเยมราชก็เริ่มทำให้ก็ให้เขาเนี่ยได้รับร่างตัวเงินตัวทองทันที and king nigga entered he took he he took his body he he was found himself in a well and he had to live in that dry well for a very long time he couldn't get out the well he had to live inside that well there was no water and he was in the body of a lizard he had to be there for a long time แล้วปรากฏว่าคนที่เขาต้องรับก็คือต้องเกิดเป็นตัวเงินตัวทองแล้วก็อยู่ในบ่อน้ำเป็นระยะเวลาที่นานไม่มีอาหารไม่มีน้ำให้อยู่ให้กิน But the king said, although I was put into that body, into that terrible body of a lizard, I I always thought about Krishna. I always thought about you, Krishna, my dear Lord, and my memory was never vanquished. I never stopped thinking of you. Wow. But w h e h a e n you in that body. กับบุคคลที่ข้าพเจ้าระลึกถึงเนี่ยคือกฤษณาแล้วระลึกแต่ถึงพระองค์แต่ก็ไม่เคยที่จะแบบไม่ไม่คิดถึงพระองค์ So we can understand from King Nigga's what King Nigga is saying that people who follow these uh, karma kandi activities and just want to enjoy material benefit that they're not very intelligent. สำหรับคนที่ทำในส่วนของคารมาคันดีทำกิจกรรมของคารมาคันดีอยู่เนี่ยเขาเนี่ยแบบว่าไม่ค่อยฉลาดมากนักมากนัก Lord Yamaraj the god of death he had given King Nigga the chance that what do you want to enjoy your pious activities first or your sinful activities and he chose to suffer for his sins first แล้วก็พอเวลาให้ให้เลือกเนี่ยจะมีความสุขกับชีวิตที่สุขสบายก่อนหรือว่าความทุกข์กับชีวิตที่ทำบาปมาก่อนเขาเลือกชีวิตที่ทำบาป Just a minute, where am I? Okay, uh, so King Nigga could have first of all taken the results of his pious activities. ซึ่งจริงๆแล้วเนี่ยกษัตริย์นิกาเนี่ยสามารถที่จะรับเอาผลบุญจากกิจกรรมบุญที่ตัวเองทำเนี่ยก่อนนะ But he thought, he thought it's better to let me suffer for my impious things first, and then I will enjoy more my pious activities. So we should understand that this King Nigga, that he was not very advanced in Krishna consciousness. A Krishna conscious person develops love of God, love of Krishna. He doesn't love pious or impious activities. So because the devotee loves Krishna, he doesn't suffer for all these pious and impious activities. And and it's stated in the Brahma Samhita that a devotee is protected by the grace of Krishna, and he's not subject to the laws of karma. But somehow, this King Nigga, somehow, maybe by his pious activities, he had a 
he, he had a desire to see the Lord, to see the Supreme Lord Krishna. And King Riga said to Lord Krishna, he said, I had a great desire that someday I might be able to see you personally. So I had this, the, the King, King Riga said, I had this desire to see you and it combined with my tendency to perform my karmakandi activities, to do my rituals and give charity. So because of this, I was able to remember who I was in my former life even though I became a lizard. Some people have that gift, they remember their past life. And that sometimes even small children, they remember their previous life. So King Nuga, although he was in the body of a lizard, he could remember his previous life. And now he's free of that lizard body, he's got a demigod body, and he offers prayers to Krishna. He's able to see Krishna. And he said, you are the super soul in everyone's heart. Great yogis see you through the Vedas. And to achieve the, the, the elevated position of realizing that they're equal in quality with you, they always meditate on you within their heart. But although such people, great saintly persons, may able to, they may be able to see you constantly within their heart, they still cannot see you face to face. But King Nega said, I'm very surprised that I'm able to see you fit personally. I was engaged in so many activities, especially as a king. So I was living in luxury and opulence and I was subject, I was having so much happiness but sometimes also a lot of misery. And now I'm so fortunate I can see you personally. So maybe I think I've become liberated from the material existence. So King Riga was given the chance 
to receive the results of his impious activities. He got the body of a lizard. He made a mistake in his pious activities. He did a little thing wrong. And because that, put him in the body of a lizard. So he couldn't go to the demigod, he couldn't immediately go to the position of a demigod. But at the same time, he was, because of his pious activities, and he also thought of Krishna, so he was quick, he soon got released from the body of a lizard. And because, and now he's got the body of a demigod. So people who worship the Supreme Lord, sometimes, people, sometimes people worship the Supreme Lord and at the same time desire material opulence. So they may be given the bodies of demigods. So although these demigods can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly, but still they're not able to go to the spiritual world. They don't get into Vaikuntha. But if the demigods continue to be devotees, then in the next chance they get, they will enter to the Vaikuntha planets. So King Nigga has got the body of a demigod, so he continues to remember everything. And he says to Krishna, he says, My dear Lord, you are the Supreme Lord. You are worshipped by all the demigods. You are not an ordinary person. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are the source of all happiness for all living entities. So you are, you are known as Govinda. You are the Lord of all the living entities who have accepted material bodies. And you are also the Lord of those who have, who don't have material bodies, who are just, who are just uh, like evil spirits, like ghosts. You are also the Lord of all these different living entities. But we know that people who live in Vaikuntha, they have, they have bodies made, they have the bodies not of material elements, they have spiritual bodies, which are eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. So you are the shelter of all living entities. You are Narayan, and you are seated in the heart of all living beings. You are the supreme director of everyone's 
activities. Therefore, you are called Rishikesh. So then King Nega says to Krishna, he said, because you have given me the body of a demigod, now I have to go to the heavenly planets. So I'm taking this opportunity to beg for your mercy. And I pray that I may have the benediction of never forgetting your lotus feet, no matter what form of life or what planet I may be transferred to. You are all pervading, you are present everywhere, and you are the cause of all causes. Your power is unlimited. So I offer my obeisances to you again and again. My dear Lord, your body is full of bliss and knowledge and you are eternal. You are the master of all mystic powers. Therefore, you are known as Yogeshwar. Kindly accept me as an insignificant particle of dust at your lotus feet. So before he entered the heavenly planets, King Nirga circumambulated Lord Krishna and touched his helmet to the lotus feet of Krishna and bowed down before him. And then an aeroplane came from the heavenly planets. So King Nega took permission from Lord Krishna and he got in the aeroplane. So after the king left, then Lord Krishna began to praise King Riga that he would that he had so much devotion to the Brahmanas and he gave so much charity and he did so many rituals. <laughs> So if you cannot become a, a devotee, then you should try to follow the Vedic principles and do the rituals. And this will help one to see Krishna. And you may get to go to the spiritual world. Or you may have to go first to the heavenly planets, and then from the heavenly planets, then you may go to the spiritual world. So Lord Krishna was there with all of his relatives who were all from the Kshatriya, they were all from the Kshatriya uh, caste, means they were all kings and rulers. So Lord Krishna wanted to teach them about the character, the good example of King Nega. <laughs> And Lord Krishna said, even though you may be a powerful king, it doesn't give you the right to take any property of a brahmana 
and use it for your own purpose. So take, Lord Krishna says, uh, I, I do not think that taking poison is as dangerous as taking a Brahmana's property. If you take ordinary poison, you can still get treatment and you can get cured from its effects. But if you take a Brahmana's property, there's no cure for that. So that we see the example of King Nuga. He was very powerful and very pious, but just due to a small mistake, he had to become a lizard. So poison, ordinary poison affects people, only people who drink it. And fire can be put out just by pouring water in it. But the fire made by the power of a Brahmana who is dissatisfied, if a Brahmana is dissatisfied, if he's not happy, if he's dissatisfied with something, then that fire of the Brahmana can burn to ashes the whole family of a person who displeases the Brahmana. And, yeah, and Prabhupada explains in the past some brahmanas they were able to light fires without matches, they would just use mantras and they couldn't light the fire. If somebody even touches a Brahmana's property, his family is ruined for three generations. If, if somebody by force takes away a Brahmana's property, then that person who takes the Brahmana's property by force, then their family for ten generations, they'll all suffer and they will all be ruined. And if somebody becomes a pure Vaishnava, then ten generations of his family will all be liberated. <coughs> and if any king becomes so proud of his wealth and he thinks he can take a Brahmana's property, then he is going he will go to hell. <laughs> Because he did such a sinful thing, he will have to suffer. And if somebody takes away the property of a, a very charitable Brahman, then then that person is put into hell and, and his family also have to suffer. And 
ทำให้อิสลามที่ดีเนี่ยต้องอับเขาจะต้องไปทำให้ครอบครัวของตัวเองทำลาย And if you take something away from a brahmana, when it was given by somebody else, then that person is condemned for at least 60,000 t h years as a, a to live in the body of a miserable insect in stool. <laughs> The Lord Krishna said to all of the boys and relatives present there, "He said, 'Do not even by mistake take the possessions of a brahmana, and don't bring any contamination on our whole family.'" Krishna n e v e s n t h o e brahmana. ไอ้กับกับพวกเด็กๆในราชตระกูลบอกว่าอย่าทำความผิดพลาดกับพราหมณ์เด็กค่ะ Because then the duration of our life, the duration of your life will be reduced, and you will be defeated by your enemies, and you will lose all your royal opulences. And when, when you give up your body, you'll go to hell. You become a snake. And Lord Krishna told his family members that if a brahmana becomes angry with you and calls you by ill names or curses you, still you should not retaliate. You should just smile and tolerate him and offer respects to the brahmana. And Lord Krishna said, "I myself offer obeisances to brahmanas three times a day." จบบทนี้แล้ว All right. Any are there any questions? เอ่อใครมีคำถามอะไรถามไปนะคะ Yes, Raj, you are the Satsipat. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, and dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. So Guru s h r i Shri p r a b h u p a d a Uh, Guru Maharaj, these Brahmins, they uh, could find a compromise in this situation so that the king would not suffer. Why didn't they do it? Huh? I don't understand. What do you say? 
Ah, yes, Guru Mukha. Uh, these Brahmins, they could find a compromise in this situation so that uh, the king would not suffer. Uh, why didn't they do it? Oh, yeah. Because these brahmanas had vowed that they would only take charity one time. They didn't want to take charity several times. They just they made a vow that they would just take charity one time. So they didn't want to break their vow. Because the Vedic culture, there were so many people, you know, there's many people giving charity, they all want to give charity, so that this, uh, these brahmanas, they didn't want to all the time be taking charity from people. They made a vow, no more charity, just one-time charity, that's all. You understand? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Well, thank you very much for your explanation. It's very clear now. Yeah. The brahmanas today, they want to take charity more and more and more. They never take enough. They always want more. Yes, but then. these were first class brahmanas. They are described as being first class because they vowed only one time charity. โอเคครับอ่าฮาเรเคชนะครูมหาราชตารวะปนามเพศเสมหะบอกอบิเสเสสอคอริทูสิลาปะวปันเอ่ออาจารย์คําถามของพี่นะคะคือถ้าคนป
And then at that time, then he can go back to God. ค่อยๆอ่ะอาจารย์นะคะขอพี่ขอขยายตรงนี้นิดนึงนะคะคืออย่างของกรณีเค้าเป็นกษัตริย์แต่ว่าอย่างเราเป็นสาวกธรรม
performing all these ritualistic activities, the very pious activities, he got the benefit and that developed his attraction for the Supreme Lord. And so when he saw the Lord, he was able to offer prayers. So he was very fortunate, you know, he actually understood the Lord. Yeah, yes, too much. So we have to do every activity for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna, then there is no karma. Otherwise we can become lizard also. Right, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Yes, any other questions, Arjuna? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I got three more. We go with the... Uh, okay, maybe... Sri Devi Maji, if you're ready, you can... Um, I'm ready. Hare yeah, Hare. another two is waiting, so please make it short. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri La Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, my question is, uh, it says in the purport that being given the choice, um, King, R King Riga could have first accepted the results of his pious activities. Would it have made a difference if he had chosen the, the, the results of his pious activities and gone to heaven first? Then after that, would he still have been made into a lizard because of the mistake that he made? That is my question. Is there a difference? Choosing for the pious activities first and then later for the mistake? Well, yeah, the, you see, if he had chosen to enjoy the pious activities, he would have gone to the higher planets, he would have gone to the planets of the demigods, and there he could have uh, learned about more about devotional service. He could have got you know, he could have been benefited by the higher association, better association. He could have oh. understood something more than just ritualistic activities. But in the form of a lizard, he couldn't do anything. Oh, yes. So, so actually, it's, it's very dangerous for us to choose to want to suffer first. I mean, for those who are not devotees, they choose they want to suffer first and enjoy later. It's very dangerous, actually. Well, devotees, we should simply want to serve Krishna. Either way, either way, it's not very desirable to suffer or to enjoy its material. We, a devotee, should simply want devotional service. Okay, now I've understood it. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, who's next, Arjuna? Yogi Tamataji. Hare Krishna Gurudev, please accept some humble obeisances. Gurudev, I want to ask, um, uh, since uh, Maharaj had darshan of the Lord, wouldn't he be purified all in one go? Like uh, Dhruva Maharaj, he had darshan of Narayana and he said, just seeing you is as good as the pebbles are nothing that he was looking for. So. How come that he couldn't be transferred back to the spiritual world? Were there still some bad qualities or that something he had to repent for? Or is there a reason, Gurudev? Yes, there's, you have to do more than just see the Lord. You have to serve the Lord. It's not enough just to see the Lord. Just to see, oh, I want to see the Lord. That's not going to take you back to Godhead. You have to, mm. do, you have, to have the mood of service. Mm. It's not enough just to see the Lord. To go, to go back to Godhead, you have to be in the mood of a servant. Mm. Then you can go. Okay, understood, Gurudev. Thank you. Okay, and yes? Archana? Yes, Dumaraj, Patma Madhaji. Hare Krishna, Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. I just want to know, can charity be given to um, a karam kanti brahmana sometimes? Or do we get karma if we give them? 
If you give kar if you give charity to a karma kandi brahmana, do you get do you get karma? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes, you do. But then, if he refuses, then they will dispense. No, Guru Dev. Huh? Is it if he refuses them, then we then they get uh, then they are unhappy. Then is it okay? Well, generally, what we do, we give people prasadam. You know, you want to feed the brahmanas. You know, that's generally what you do. You feed the brahmanas, right? You don't need to give them money. Just give them food. You know. Yes, but but sometimes Gurudev they expect cash. Well, then you give very small, very limited. Okay. But better is just feed them, give them prasadam. In case we give them cash, we we'll just in Krishna's name we can give them a little. Well, you get kar you get karma. Oh, we get karma even then. Yeah. Oh. Because they are not going to use it for Krishna's service, right? Yes, yes. Okay, good there. Thanks so much. But because they're brahmanas, because they're dear to Lord Krishna, you know, in some ways they're dear to Krishna, so. Because they're brahmanas, but no. And Kali Yuga, actually, who's a brahmana? There's no real brahmanas in the Kali Yuga. That's the thing. Yes, that's why, Gurudev. That's why I was a bit confused. Yeah, there's no real brahmanas in the Kali Yuga, but sometimes just for social, just because the situation, embarrassing situation, you're, you're in the position, you have to give something. So you give nominal, you don't give much. Yeah, okay. Okay, Gurudev. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Archana. Yes, Maharaj. No more questions. Okay, so thank Archana very much for the translation. Thank all thank of you. Thank you. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Goodbye, Kapenda Ki Jai. Okay.